late, uh, so he'll be here as soon as he can, I'm sure. So call the uh, regular meeting of the Jackson Select Board uh, for June 11, 2019 here at 3.30 in the town office to order. And first on the agenda is approval from the minutes from May 28, 2019. Have you had a chance to peruse? I did, and they look fine. So mm -hmm. if I can make a motion to approve the minutes. All right, and I will second that motion. Any discussion on that? Hearing Aye. none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number three, thank you. Um, action items, we had nothing on the table this week. Um, next upcoming meetings are June 25th, July 9th, and July 23rd at 3.30 here in the Selectman's office. Let me have a copy of that for thank you. Records. And I see Kevin's in the house. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> already up? All right. Yeah, you're already up, man. This is oh, item number four, building inspector. <laughs> you can get a chance to sit down. Yeah, Barely. You, 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 you can summarize yeah. or just yeah. ask if anyone has questions. Oh, yeah, we have quite a few like items that. here. And, um, yeah, let me just run that right? list. I wouldn't have any questions. Mm -hmm. um, Five more skylights. Yeah, has anyone ever looked at this and have any questions on any of the permits? Uh, not really, no. There, there is a new house, number six. That's a mm -hmm. new house that's going to go up on Patriot Way. Okay. There used to be a yard up there. That's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Everything else is in place. Yeah. Um, and number nine's going well pretty good. It's replaced a deck that collapsed this past mm -hmm. winter. The house wasn't very old. I was gonna say rotted wood, that's Yeah, it was there's some definitely some flashing problems there and yeah. had to huh. do a lot of it. And uh, was that pressure treated that did it? Um, the deck was pressure treated. Um, it was just um, it was those TGI four joist with a thin rim mm -hmm. and they didn't have ties on it to tie it to the deck to the building and the um, lags only went in to like a board that was three quarters inch thick. Mm -hmm. So there was some issues. <coughs> Shortcut? Well, yeah, just not <laughs> proper proper construction methods. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, everything else is pretty straightforward. Lots of action. Oh yeah, and there's a new house up on the end of um, uh, Green Hill Road that's going, and the house is coming down. Um, and they had asbestos abatement, and um, I don't know if the excavator is up there or not. I did see a <coughs> ten wheeler and a trailer go by, but I didn't see the excavator, so it might it might be coming down already down. It is up. pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, Jay and me have been going over the um, up at Whitney's to try to get a right. That was on uh, coming up on our. Uh, oh, plan. is that on there too? Yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah. A little change of plan. They're going to go out the old bulkhead, um, which has an old roof on it. Taking that off. I'm sorry, that, that was a different item. I'm sorry. Oh. So you're talking about the salon? Yeah, the yeah. salon. Yeah, yeah just like they, they have to meet like you know fire code and ex mm -hmm. extra egress and everything mm -hmm. else. So. And it's kind of like you start tearing apart stuff and there's issues and <laughs> so we're kind of going. Can't changing, th yeah, changing things as we go, but I think we got a good plan now. I was just up there, so okay. that's looking good. So. Keeping you busy, I always um, Yeah, I'm straight out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a couple more permits that actually came in more than what's here. So. Mm. Good. So. Very good. All right. Does anybody have anything for Kevin? I just had a question on occupancy permits. You just sign off on it, right? You don't, do you bring that to a meeting? No. Uh, well, usually, usually Jamie go out to wherever, who's going to get the <coughs> occupancy permit. 
and I make up the you know form, and then he does his thing, life and safety stuff, checks, make sure the smoke detectors all work and all that, and check railings and everything that's built up to par, and then we all sign off. Town gets a copy. I put a copy in my folder in the. Um, but it doesn't have to come to the smoke. Um, no, I get no. Nope, we used nope. to in the old days. Yeah. Um, Why do you ask? Just curious. Well, I'm just curious of the um, procedure. Yeah, there's a procedure in the International Building Code that you have to list all the um, requirements um, to be met, or, and in what what the building codes were at the time. So there's building codes, and there's also the uh, the adopted uh, fire codes, and all those standards are. Um, do they have to be renewed occupancy permits? No, unless, no, no. unless once, there's once nothing. It's, once it's changed. issued, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, unless yeah, there's some kind of change of use, that would be the only other thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. You know, or, and usually, you get an occupancy permit for either renovation, change of occupancy, or a new new construction. Um, but if someone's doing a great big addition or something, yeah, I might issue one for you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, renovation or whatever. But it was just like a bathroom and a renting a bathroom now. It's pretty straightforward. Very good. Anybody All right. else? Alright, thank you very yeah. much, Kevin. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number five, new business. Um, first we have a letter of thank you, or letters of thank yous. Um, first is up for the uh, DOT for the bridge completion on our lovely covered bridge. Uh, it says, Dear Will and Steve, the Board of Selectmen would like to extend their sincere gratitude for the exceptional work uh, completion on the Jackson covered bridge. The town has received several compliments on the decking, sidewalk, and interior paint job. The town of Jackson appreciates all your efforts and efforts from the whole DOT crew. Very nice. So I'll sign that. Up here. We need a motion for that. Yeah. And the second one we have is for the Mount Garden Club, Mountain Garden Club. It says, Dear Mountain Cl Garden Club members, volunteers, the Board of Selectmen would like to thank, extend their sincere gratitude for your dedication to maintaining the Heritage Trail at the Jackson Town Office Building right up mm -hmm. front here. The Heritage Trail is one of the more one of the many focal points in our town, and without your continued efforts and volunteerism, we would not exist. The board would also like to thank you for the care and maintenance of flowers and the town gazebo. Mountain Garden Club helps make Jackson a beautiful community, and the town are very lucky to have you. And thank you very much for your efforts on that. Mm -hmm. Item B is a liquor license extension request. We have a couple of these. The first one is the Thompson House Eatery um, to serve outside their licensed area to accommodate farm dinner being held on August 4th, 2019. Uh, this extended area will be through the backfield and around the path of the property adjacent to the farm. The area will be fenced off by rope and contain all guests from the main event. The event will be approximately 70 guests one long table is located at 193 Main Street. Hello. Hello. Um, so. And I did verify that they are having some music, but it's acoustic and they're ending before. Okay, sorry. Um, we require. Before like 10 o'clock or whatever. <coughs> I think it's like 6 or Yeah. Uh, we'll need a motion for that one. I will make a motion to approve the liquor license extension at the Thompson House Eatery. Mm -hmm. right. I'll second that. Right. Any discussion on that? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh, the next request is uh, from Whitney's Inn. To extend their liquor license uh, to the shovel at the Shovel Handle Pub located at Whitney's Inn on 357 Black Mountain Road, uh, to include the fire pit area just off the front patio outside the Greenery Pub, and also include a sitting room just outside the entrance to the Birch's dining room in the main inn. Um, I saw Jay come in. Jay, you have any issues with that? I don't think we've ever had a burning pit come up before as a 
Please. No, it's normal stuff we do everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, people are always changing their use on the patios or uh, <coughs> decks or tent area or farm table out in the middle of a field where they want to serve liquor. So the liquor commission requests it yeah. be okay from us, I guess. Um, so it's normal everyday business where we measure stuff and put an occupant load on an area. Mm -hmm. Inside the building, outside the building, there's really nothing for me to look at other than, <coughs> I, mean, I guess you can look at some fire safety stuff outside, but it's really not a lot for me to look at other than I put an occupant load on it. Because mm -hmm. the liquor commission is the ones that request it be a fenced in, roped off area when it's outside. So they, they, I think the only thing we, on the outside stuff, they look for, looking for an occupant load calculation for me to put a number on that. Inside stuff, then that gets into all the fire safety stuff and make sure the building's got its permit up to snuff, or if it's not a permitted place of assembly, then we just write a letter of basically a, uh, what's the term they call it? basically a letter saying that we've inspected it and they're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion to uh, get the permission to witness <coughs> in to extend their liquor license outside. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 This uh, last item, item number C, is uh, the 218 agreement on adopt a higher exclusion. Uh, this is for people that are involved um, being elected officials, uh, working election workers, excuse me, and right now they have an exclusion of Medicare and was it Social Security, Social Security. Um, of $100. That was, I think, 1971 that was, 79, 79 was when that was first written. And um, we were uh, asked to update our records to show that it is uh, supposed to be $1,700. It's actually it's 18 as of, um, 2019. 18 in 2019? 1800. And again, this really doesn't affect us too much other than the fact that it's just upping the limit um, and making it uh, reflect, um, I guess, normal town usage compared to what it was, $100. And again, it was just to uh, offset the Social Security and Medicare um, are exempt from that first seven, $1,800, excuse me. Um, and again, they don't come anywhere near that amount anyway. So, <laughs> so, so I entertain a motion to uh, sign that 218, 218 agreement. I'll make a motion to sign the 218 agreement and increase the level of exemption to $1,800. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Any questions or discussion on that? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to read that motion the way it's written there? And that's okay. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. So this is the motion. You know, we're all set. That's yeah. right. We made. It. We're good. Oh, got it. Okay. So just signing on the side. Sign you later, away. Mm -hmm. Just one second. <coughs> There's right. two places: there, a green and a purple tab. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
much. Um, any other new business from any of you folks? I have none. Okay. Moving on to old business. First is the budget update. Um, let's see, we're a little over 50%, I guess, in that category. I think about 55% would be about what we're at in terms of part of the year gone by. Um, we want is public safety is at 62. That's a little bit above. Again, some of that may be materials that are purchased. Um, things like the debt service, we've used all that up and at 83 percent, we haven't used it all up, excuse me, 83 percent in culture and recreation is at 76. Health and welfare is 4 percent. So again, um, those items are kind of way out of whack right now, slightly out of whack only because we pay those out certain times a year and those have been paid for already. Um, but otherwise, 58 was the total that we're at right at the moment, 58 percent of the budget. All righty. Any questions on the budget or anything? Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. Moving on to old library. Um, <clears throat> we had a request from Sarah to um, use the old library uh, in a fashion that apparently that would make it open to the public. And I guess from what we found out, um, doing book sales and 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 having it open to the public, we're only allowed 30 flushes for a day uh, of the septic system. And um, I guess that was one of the reasons why we had to keep it from being open to the public to, so we wouldn't have that kind of public restroom usage without some kind of uh, oversee on it. Um, so we had to, that was kind of our thought or people's thought on you know keeping the library available to only small groups that would have a designated number of distinguished people that be allowed at the library at a certain time and therefore be able to monitor the toilet. Does that sound correct? Makes sense to me, yeah. yeah. Um, so we had... Um, so that's what we were trying to find out, whether you guys wanted to keep it um, the way it has been with the groups, with the spots, or whether you wanted to open it up. So that's what we were trying to find out. And we thought that Sarah's request was going to be a situation where it would be considered open to the public. Right. And then you wouldn't be followed out those regulations of keeping it, the uh, septic system at minimal use. And that's, so we declined that, that particular request. So. Were, were you going to? Oh, sorry. Go Joyce? I, I was just curious. I never heard that 30 flushes. Yeah, have I. <laughs> mm. yeah. It's the limit on the septic. Yeah, but, and I um, understand the working, I understand how the septic is hooked up. And yeah. I, I, yeah, it's just a term. I, I never, it's a, it's a number I never heard. Do you know where that came from? I do not. Um, it, was, it was a question that. Came up. I don't even remember how the question came up, but Julie actually emailed her, um, who said that number. Yeah. I must have known the, the plan. You know, I don't know <clears throat> where he got it, but it must have been when they were installing it, and it's on the. Or maybe he calculated yeah. something. He, he calculated, calculated something. Yeah. I don't believe there's anything yeah. on the plan. We'll change the applications to say we will be open for three hours or 30 flushes, whichever comes first. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to manage that. Can um, we get some clarification from Burr on where absolutely. that number came from? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just curious. Yeah. yeah. It's probably based on the gallons on per, per flush. You know, right. Sir? Yes, I'd, I'd just like to reiterate what I said at the end of the meeting last time, that uh, I was more than willing to be a docent, which is a person that gives the history of the building. I just felt that people walking around the mile came, you know, when other groups were there and popped in to just see the building because they were curious. Um, I didn't anticipate 30 people or whatever. But I, I also said that I was more than willing to put a private sign on the entrance to the bathroom 
and if anybody needed bathroom facilities, to tell them that the town of Jackson did have such, and they were at the top of the falls, they were at the ballpark, and behind a public library. But I, I just wanted to reiterate that, that I was not anticipating having 30 flushes or 30 people every Wednesday or the Wednesdays that I had it open. But I appreciate the input. Thank you. <coughs> yes, Bob. The, um, the, the old library was open, I believe, over Memorial Day weekend for the friends of the library to sell books in there. And um, I'm just wondering what kind of crowds they got in there because that's probably going to be the biggest amount of usage that no. I can well, imagine from the public. I, I don't, don't think very much of anybody using I don't think we're going to be able to allow that to take place there anymore based on. No, I'm saying for this past oh. Memorial Day, I doubt very much that they got anything like 30 flushes. And you know that's a really busy day where people are probably looking for public restrooms. But it would be interesting if anybody knows what kind of uh, traffic they have that day. I have that information. Go ahead. I'm Linda Terry. I'm vice president of the Friends and one of the chairs for the, the mini book sales. Uh, all we had folks monitoring um, the attendance at, at the book sale. I think there was only one instance of someone who came in to buy books who has to use the library uh, bathroom. And that was that was it. And uh, we were made aware of the fact that there were only 30 flushes, so we tried to keep people away from the bathroom. And we were also aware that there was a 25 person occupancy limit for the building, so that was monitored closely as well. So the traffic was not particularly great on either Saturday or Sunday. May I ask one more question? Sure. Now that we're aware of this, does, uh, could you tell me if your uh, group, whoever is meeting with the school board, if this is something that is taken into consideration for school groups? Good question. Yes, absolutely. Any group that wants to consider meeting there, it has to be a consideration. It's certainly not an exclusion. I mean, you know, or, or we're not making anybody different for what the, what's required. You're, you're talking about a, a, an open group versus a select group like mm -hmm. the kids would be obviously a select yeah, anybody, group. Yeah, anybody has to follow the same, you know, adhere to, yeah, and adhere to what the maximum capacity is. Anybody else in the library? Moving on to item C, the Valley Crossroad Bridge. Uh, Patrick, do you have an update for us? What are you doing on that? Uh, it's coming along. It's kind of slow work. The beams are um, 250 pounds a piece. So you need my help down there lift it up? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> down tomorrow, we'll be there. Uh, it's coming along, it's just over halfway. Okay. The beams down, we, we're picking four or five up, so there isn't a big giant hole. And, uh, and then putting four back and strapping it together and we parked it back over it last weekend so mm -hmm. it's it's strong it passed the the test <laughs> so we did comment on that when you were by it's pretty sturdy right now <laughs> so um, i'm hoping the weather's the weather last week they said it was going to rain the last two days mm -hmm. of the week and so we didn't plan on going up there and then it ended up not raining so mm -hmm. it's kind of trying to play it by the weather but a little tough to work that stuff is so slippery and the beams are slippery when it's wet so we're kind of laying away from it when it's raining so but it's come along good hopefully it'll be done this week we're really close to being done this week hopefully thank you getting on top of that um item e any anybody else on that item d no no uh, item E, fire station feasibility study. How's that going? Did you want to go over the solar project? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss the solar project? I'm sorry. I That's missed the solar project. <laughs> Looking at checking your update before I even got to it. Uh, solar project update with Dick. How are you doing? Well, I think we have our agreement in 
in place. Uh, I think when there's some aspect of it needed to be bumped for Peter Malia, which I think was appropriate, but I think we could go ahead and say, basically vote to sign it when it, all the words are put back together. I, I think it was uh, pretty good back and forth. All of uh, Peter Malia's suggestions were dealt with by revision and uh, they had really logical answers to all the questions. So I think the, uh, <coughs> the form is in place, we're ready to go. I, I think if we could vote on it now and we get in the quay, it's still going to be probably August, September before they start working on it. But then we should have it up and running, you know, by late fall, which would be wonderful. I also had uh, the opportunity to go to a municipal uh, forum, a solar forum. I was asked to actually be a presenter. And uh, down at Tin Mountain, it was very interesting. Um, Madison had gone through, I think, a three-year study and uh, they had all the, the PowerPoint and so my presentation was pretty short. You know, I said, it took about a year, we had like-minded people, got going on it, um, put it together, brought it to the town, had it voted on. I said, you know, it was really um, rewarding that it was uh, accepted by the town so well. One of the questions that I was asked was about, uh, let's see, one fellow, oh, he said, uh, well, these solar collectors are getting better. They'll be more efficient, you know, in a couple of years. And I said, they're like computers, you know. If you're going to wait to get that perfect computer, you're never going to get one. Mm -hmm. Because there's always going to be the next generation. Yes, John. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always going to be that next one. Yeah. That's a little better than this one. And so if you wait, so I just said, do it. You know, start, do a building. Uh, do part of it, you know. And then if you phase it along and build a ladder of solar, you know, you'll have those really efficient uh, collectors. But anyway, it was very interesting. A lot of, uh, there was selectmen, planning board people, town engineers, and, uh, Really, it, it, it was almost like preaching to the choir. I mean, they all wanted to do it, but you know, they were kind of, and I said, just get it going, do one building. You'll be happy. Well, I, the voters definitely um, support the project at the town meeting, and, and uh, I think that uh, it was all gonna be contingent in part to us having a contractual agreement that all parties understood and our town council has been through it and he's asked any appropriate questions that he's had about the agreement with revision and they've worked out the language and so yeah I'm, I'm certainly ready to make a motion that we approve the contract with the uh, with the revision language uh, worked out with the town council and uh, That'll be my motion. All right. I will second the motion. Right. Any further discussion? I have one. All right. Hearing none, all those in favor will sign the contract when it arrives after its final draft. Aye. 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 Very good. And I think we I should put the timer on you, Dick. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I, I look forward to seeing what the results are when everything is up and running and hopefully Excellent. you can present mm -hmm. something after that to show what a success it is too because I think that'll be a good demonstration to our town and the other towns that are questioning it. Well, two things came up that I thought were important for these people to know. One, the power purchase agreement, I thought was a real selling point that there was no money up front. And uh, with the co-op, this uh, group billing so that we can apply whatever overage we get mm -hmm. to any of the meters that are, you know, billed through this office. Mm -hmm. now, oh, all of that is really good, I mean, and that really kind of worked on people's minds to say, wow, you know, 
this could work <coughs> really well. You know, we're fortunate to have the property and the location for it too, and you know, mm -hmm. the right buildings, the right places to put it, so yeah. that helped a lot. Madison's going to do a ground array yeah. behind the school, and you know, it's quite extensive. Mm -hmm. But they're going to then use that, for, I think, for the school and for the fire department and for the town building and uh, all of it. So we'll see more of it. Thank you very much for your efforts on that. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. <laughs> all right. Uh, item 6E, the fire station feasibility study. Any updates on that? No, I think we haven't had any meetings no, in addition to the ones okay. here. Jay, did you have anything else? Nothing uh, updated? No, I think feasibility is a key word. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been working since the last meeting on trying to put some numbers on an addition, but um, it's the feasibility is definitely a good word. You know, we're trying to figure out if we do anything and add on it and build new. It's a big item. Is it being driven by a list of needs that are you know, required because of the changes in the rules and regulations and things? Or is that just something that, um, just that besides just that, I should say? I think it's being driven from, you know, what's coming down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff. What kind, of, Go ahead. what kind of stuff is coming down the road? Well, we got a new fire truck that's coming down the road soon that to build it and it's PA compliant, it's going to be longer than the existing truck. <clears throat> so it won't fit, basically, unless we drastically change the type of truck we replace it with. Jay, you have a, I know you do have an inventory of the trucks and how old they are and how yep. many hours and usage they have on them and then what you see coming down the road, yep. like you said, as far as replacement and yep. then, you know, like how many calls does each truck go out on, it, you know, out of the 140 calls you had last year, which trucks yep. go out, how frequently and usage, because I think that would be the determinant of what trucks well, you can never tell what to trucks go to where. It's constantly changing. It how many trucks go on how many calls? I mean, you could have you could have a year with ten structure fires, or you could go four years with no structure fires. So that's, I'm that's just, yeah. I'm just talking about do you have that from history? Not of course you can't. Well, yeah. I mean, you could look in the history and see how different. Just look in the town reports and see history of what we have for fires, what accidents mm -hmm. or motorcycle accidents or whatever we go to. That information is on paper, but it's not compiled in that list that you're asking for. Yeah. There's a run sheet for every call. So every every run sheet has a call with whatever went out and it's ours and mm -hmm. I think it's it, it's such a Oh yeah, I'm sure it is depending on yeah. and then what happens with yeah, accidents and fires. The truck that we're talking about is due for a placement in 22, 24, something like that. Uh, it's 30 years old right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of the discussion is, you know, do we keep the truck longer than that? You know, is there anything, you know, can we run it longer? Uh, that's part of the whole discussion with all of it, you know. Have you ever discussed whether or not you still need all four trucks versus three trucks or, you know, two different trucks? or Well, yeah, different we're, always, we're always looking at all that. I mean, our last truck we replaced, we went to four-wheel drive, which has proved many times over in the last three years that it was definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and other things coming down the road are... You know, everything from, you know, handicap accessible stuff, you know, right. handicap accessible to get to Kevin's office or, you know, we've had classes that we were told we can't have in <coughs> class because it wasn't a handicap accessible meeting space. So we're always thinking about that. Right. Um, I, and I mean, there's a, a 
correct me if I'm wrong, Dick, or, or even you, but you know, there's a good charge of the members, uh, the committee, if that's the right word, feasibility study people, that it's not just all of us coming in and saying, you know, we want to do wise You know, it's, okay. it's trying to figure out what to do down the road, you know? You put $300,000 into a 50, 60 year old, 80 year old building that has had five additions on it, or do you look at building new fire station down the road? Right. Or do we do nothing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I mean, like you said, this, this didn't generate from the fire department saying we want a new fire station. Right. I was just Yeah, I just say what's driving it, I think, is where to put the money. Should we put money into this station to keep doing the, what I call, band-aid repairs, or do we do a comprehensive either remodel of a <coughs> new station? I, I think that's what the discussion, it's not cast in stone that we want a new station, but we're trying to f develop what will be cost effective uh, for the future. You know, where do we go with it? So I don't think we're jumping on any one uh, bandwagon. I think we're looking at it all. Is there another meeting date scheduled for? Next week we have a meeting? Yeah, we have a monthly meeting come up that will talk about where we go from here after we met with you guys in a public meeting coming up in a week or two, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm ex expecting maybe a public meeting, this is just me, but I would expect another public meeting down the road soon to say, okay, give you a little more information to digest after digesting what we gave you here a few weeks ago. Um, that's what I, I would say. Um, who who is on the feasibility? Who is who's conducting it? What are the members? Who are the members, please? So the committee, if that's what we're going to call it, is Barbara's the selectman liaison. Dick is still on it because he was on it before the selectman change. Devaney Deal from Devaney Salon is on it. Hank Dresch is on it. He was on the building committee for the highway garage. Jerry Doherty's on it. Pat's in on it from the highway department because it affects anything with that building affects them a little bit up there. Um, who am I missing? Who else? Bill Kelly's on it from the fire department. So we tried, we put these, you know, we wanted to get some people on it that didn't have ties to the fire department, of course, like Devaney and Hank and Dick. So. Good. Do we have a capital improvement plan in the town? It seems like it used to be. Well, we have, we have one for the equipment, major equipment. We set up that, you set that up back then. Yeah, it's in every town report. Our annual uh, town report has the updated uh, the capital improvement list. And then the planning board had done a little bit more extensive. When was that? 2009. 2009. Yeah, but I don't think we have an updated one for any of the building for major capital structures yet. Jay? Uh, me and Pat actually were discussing a little bit of stuff here this afternoon before we came in here. Um, and he brought up a really good point of whether at some point we should have some kind of a work session whereas this fire department thing came up as to what's the big capital stuff with everybody. Like you said, the capital improvement plan has fire trucks on it and graders and loaders and cruisers, but should there be some kind of a work session down the road to say, okay, what's the selectman's office looking for down the road? Or what's the library looking for down the road? Or what's the school looking for in 25 years? Or I think that would be a great idea. We had that conversation uh, with the uh, uh, school board members and there was a uh, 
when we approach them to gauge their interest in participating in the uh, solar power project with the power purchase agreement, because we were eyeing uh, the Whitney Center's uh, roof that's angled nicely to receive solar energy, and they weren't in a position to really <coughs> participate, partly because of the fact that uh, the shingles on that side are going to need to be replaced within the next 10 years, and so that didn't really make it a feasible um, place to construct the solar panels. And the, so the conversation went at that point to, you know, we haven't had a future search committee in a long time, and maybe as long, it, you know, to identify these projects with all the different entities in town having an opportunity to kind of like identify what their upcoming needs are and then to give the townspeople an opportunity to weigh in and prioritize what they feel is important and maybe it's time for that uh, that conversation was in the middle of february and everybody was geared towards march at that point but um, it's not a bad idea to come together uh, the last time we had one of those, it was up at Black Mountain. It was, it was many years ago, but I remember that was, uh, I think Betsy and, and uh, Bill Kelly spearheaded that. Yeah. Betsy Harding and Bill Kelly spearheaded that. So I don't know if it's time for doing something like that again. I know the <coughs> University of New Hampshire, New Hampshire Listens, has a formula in place it's pretty much the same as the last time we come in and facilitate something like that and allow people in the town an opportunity to weigh in on 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 what is or is not an important thing to pursue as in the way of capital improvement projects so maybe it's time to spearhead that you want to you want to run that committee jay no <laughs> hey i tried Anybody else in it? Uh, it started at the planning board. I think the planning board has already discussed capital improvements a little bit. And uh, we have a meeting Thursday, I think. Uh, I'll bring it up then to see if, you know, just get it on our agenda. You know, we may say, okay, we'll put this much together and then turn it over for a charrette or yeah. whatever. We need to start that discussion now. Mm -hmm. Probably we need to be looking at something like the fall to have yeah. something like that to happen, which maybe the timing would be good mm -hmm. if that's what people want. B? We're talking about Puckettown. From UNH, they, they are so smart, they wouldn't even go in grazing garage. It might fall on the head. Isn't that good? So they had to meet outside, it's still standing. <laughs> Pat, yeah, I just <clears throat> want to make a quick comment about the fire station and the committee that's together and hopefully I'm not speaking out of place and stop me if I am, but it's definitely not, it's 100% not being driven by Jay and, you know, we're not just looking for a new station. Most of our conversation <clears throat> is, is if we were to build a new station, where would it go and how would it affect the town, you know, just because there's people in the business you can kind of you can make three phone calls and find out what's a building cost per square foot to put up so you know there's there's numbers running and, and can we even is it even anything that we even want to bring forward to the town it's not like oh we're just pushing through and we want to build a new fire station because we want to there's there's a lot of stuff that's not like it's not a building committee trying to put together a portfolio if you were trying to decide, there's a Jay and I were talking earlier. It's like, how do you decide to go ahead with it? Because I mean, it's not really falling in. But for the future, the next truck that gets purchased, we either have to decide how we're going to configure that truck because it has to be different than the truck that's there that's going to be replaced. Um, NFPA requirements say you can't have the water above a certain height. And so in order to make that work, you have to build a longer truck, not a taller truck, because they don't want fire trucks rolling over. And so if you build a longer truck, you can't put it in the station. Or if you had a bad call and there was mutual aid to come and it's the middle of winter, their trucks won't fit because, you know, our trucks are all short. 
those are kind of some of the real important things that you can see coming down the road. We've we've dealt with mutual aid, so it's not a big deal. You know, I mean, it's it's a big deal, but it's not like crucial. But it's how do you decide? Do you put another edition on something with six editions? I mean, is that is that what you do, or when do you decide enough is enough and and it's a smart wise use of money to go for a new building or do you just do you wait you know there's a there's still a bond on the highway garage that's come into play it's it's a lot of discussion about what and where and how and when it's not like we want a 14 story sky rise so we can compete with some other town it's certainly not that effect so right and i think i agree with you on that and i also think like jay said there are a lot of different people on the board to get different input, different viewpoints, and um, we'll, you know, like you said, we're not spending money yet. We're not not spending the town's money yet, so. Yes, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Choice. Control. Um, I just want to say, as this progresses, make sure that you keep it very public, and, um, you know, people in town want to be they, they want to be told about it, they want, to, they want to know all the ins and outs, and they don't want to be surprised. Um, and one more thought, I guess, they want, they want you to, I think, I, I don't think, I, I know I'm not speaking just for myself, but we want to be sold on this, tell us about it, sell it if you want it, you know. Make it, say, make uh, you, it very public. You are so right, and we've had that discussion. We don't even have enough information to be more public than this because it's so at the early stages, like we talked about at the meeting previous to this one. You know, we've talked to people, and that's it. We've, you know, put the, everyone's put their, given their input, I should say, and it's not Jay's wish list for Jay's garage or anything like that, for sure. It's something that says, what, what do we do? We don't have any other information. So that this is as public as we're getting in the meetings, too. We, and that is one of our points that we've discussed. The, the town has to buy into this, or it's never going, whatever decisions or uh, options are put out there, are never going to be successful if the if the voters and the taxpayers don't agree to it. So, absolutely, I agree with you 100 percent, and that is a focus of the committee. Thank you. And I'm sure there are options. And oh yeah. To know all the options. Mm -hmm. Sir. I I agree with what Joyce just said, and also too, I think this run sheet or whatever the terminology was that you were talking about the vehicles that are used you know, what we're using for vehicles, what our mutual aid assistance is, and, and so on. I think that making those documents on the e-news or here at the board or, you know, just that document, that type of document would be very helpful to see as well. I have a question. What's the population of Jets? Are you talking about voters or taxpayers or population in a specific week or because they're three different, you know, very different numbers? Well, like so. uh, comparatively, Jackson and Albany are both the same. That's why I want to know. I, know. I certainly can't answer that, but I know that certainly our population fluctuates based on what week of year it is. <laughs> um, Population may be similar, but you're not comparing apples to apples. Right. Resident residents might be the same, but in terms of peak season, you're not going to see the same number of people in Albany to do in Jackson for sure. Well, what makes you decide you want a new fire truck? What's the age and the problem with it? Is well, NFPA recommends fire trucks get traded every 15 years. We well, have a 30-year-old truck, which we feel if we need to, we may be able to get many more years out of that truck. So we're not, you know, we're not getting rid of a fire truck just because we want to get rid of a fire truck. You know, we're, we're definitely stretching things out as far farther than anybody else does. Anything else? Though? Yeah, I came to the meeting for to ask a general question. Yeah, the discussion that we're having now kind of feeds into my poor picking my thinking. 
My question was, what does the board feel is the kind and frequency of information they should provide the general public on a regular basis? And the reason I come down, I, my logic says, we provide the funds that you enable you to purchase the needs to manage the town. And there was any investment, the investors generally look for some return to say, how are you spending our money? And that, that's the general throw of we are talking now for the fire truck. But if you look at the, over the last couple of years, the attempts to provide information have been not overly friendly to receive, so we don't get much. As they, for instance, we started with the town selectman asking for more tenants at a budget hearing. So we started to say we'll provide budget information in the format that we would normally have for a budget proposal. We had difficulty getting going in the sense that we can't do that in a lot of And so we've wrestled with that. We get to a point to today, once a month, in a format that doesn't relate to our budgetary process. Part of the logic was that each manager manages his own budget so that we have an idea of who is managing and what are we receiving for that expenditures. So I asked the board, what kind of your information should you provide and how often and what details and so forth be it assessed to buy? Pat and the road agent, should he let us know what he's buying, what roads are closed, or what else is coming up? These are the kinds of been. You asked me, I provided my best guess at it, only from here thinking about it. And so I turned, turned to the board and said, what do you think? <coughs> I don't expect an answer like it says here. I understand that, but I think as we're talking in this discussion on the fire truck and need to know and so forth, I look at it in a more general sense of how are you managing our money. So the report that John went over as far as a recap of how much we spent to date in the budget, is that insufficient for no, information or is that well, sort of what you're well, talking about? I'll go through this whole thing of saying this what I think has been less than overly successful. So I'm saying, okay, what do you folks think? You tell us for a change. So I made my suggestions. Well, I'm, so I'm, I'm, you know, the new one. I, I know that every <laughs> week we come into the office and look at the town expenditures and look at all of the invoices that are approved and checks that are cut. And we, you know, have to sign off on them and approve the fact that all of them are in the budget. And I mean, I know that both Julie's are very helpful as far as explaining, and I ask questions. I ask questions about a dollar or a hundred dollars. Where I'm coming from. Okay. The budget area information should be in a format that the managers, i.e., the operator, the pats, the, and so forth, uh, road agent, these folks manage their own budget. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that should provide the information. You know, that's the information we'll be looking at. And that's what I said a long time ago. So I said, I've tried, I've put on my suggestions, over to you. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is trying to understand what you're looking for. Or Not me. I'm asking the selectmen what they think. I've told them what I think. Because I know for me, I've always said, I mean, we buy, most of my stuff is fairly expensive. Like, for example, last week, uh, a month ago, I ordered three SCBA bottles. They're 900 bucks a piece. I mean, I spent a couple thousand bucks, 3,000 bucks at the snap of my fingers just for three bottles that go on someone's back. And I've always tried to, you know, if I was gonna spend five, eight, ten thousand bucks, I'd bring that to the Sletman's office and say, look, we're doing a big purchase. This is coming. Now, daily operations for us can be a 
can spend three thousand bucks on three things at the snap of my fingers. Now, are you looking for a suggestion that we come to a selectman's meeting every month and say this is what I bought, this is what I'm buying? Is that what you're? Well, maybe the market. I, mean, I, I guess. I guess. Jerry, I've already said this. this. So I'm, I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just trying to figure out what you're what you're looking for. It's in the record. Hmm. They used to, each head of each department used to come to the meeting and say what was done for the week. What they did and such and such. But then they decided they didn't want that anymore. So you knew what the police did, the highway. So communication is communication is a main issue and I do remember coming to the selectmen's meetings when each of the departments would give an update. If it would help to be in a manner that would be more more communicative or if that's not a word, would communicate better to the audience than if it's an uh, not a possibility for each of the department heads to be there if they could do type of what well, I call it a key data sheet. A sheet that says this is what we did this week, this is our major expenditures that we had and then it would give us an idea of the numbers and what the budget is really interpreted as and also it would give us a better status report of what we're looking at as the year progresses. So if we think that, you know, last year, if we look at the numbers and say last year the fire department had 137 calls and this year we're on track to do at least that. And out of the dollars that Jay requested in his original budget, so far he's spent this much. Just because we approved X number of dollars doesn't mean that Jay has carte blanche to spend his, like he says, at a snap of a finger. So he manages his budget well, he manages his time well. If it's some kind of a status report, then I, I'm all for that because I think that gives you an idea of how efficiently the town is running and it doesn't always equate to dollars. It can also be how do we make those decisions on what to do next year or the year after. So communication to me is important. I'm a financial person, so I like to have data. I can swim in it and bore people all day with it. But I think that would be good information to have along the road. Do we want to um, take up so much of their time that they're not able to do their jobs? Well, I guess they're all managers of a department, so that's part of their jobs. So I, you know. I mean, I know I've had that conversation with, with Bob over the years, you know, about, you know, you need me to come in, you want me to come in and talk about stuff we do every single week or every single month and spend 45 minutes and, and the answer was always given to me, no, if, if you got something important that needs to be discussed, then come in and we we'll discuss it. If it's daily, normal, everyday stuff, but then I, I mean, you I don't think that need it, to. If that's a situation, then you run into getting a, um, you know, you put on your fire hat because some fire has to be put out, not to just say it's fires, but, um, you know, you only hear about the urgent things because otherwise you're assuming status quo is is great and everything's fine which may be good but at the same time you know communicating that hey I bought the equipment that we had scheduled for first quarter this year and we're all set with that I'm not foreseeing any other um, any other expenditures that I didn't plan on we've had less calls this year than that uh, we had great response to something you know any kind of updates I guess I like that would be communication quarterly, you know, come in and say, okay, well, this is, you know, we had a pretty good winter, or we had these issues, or, rather than come in every two weeks. Um, because you could easily, if Kevin can spend 45 minutes on going over the building inspection stuff, I can spend 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, and then Pat can spend 45 minutes. And it's yeah. Cool. So I tried, I've tried to, like I'm sure we're coming up on a like middle of winter, I came in and went over a bunch of stuff and now we're into spring, it'd be, you know, I mean, I could easily come in and talk about what's gone on this spring or expenditures coming and stuff. That was, that's always been my thought, is to try to come in like quarterly rather than every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was okay ever since 2008, the way I've done it, the way it was okay to be done.
Anybody else? No, I just say anything that that kind of information would be put in the minutes that we have access by getting in the gifts and minutes. And again, I say, you guys, you folks are the managers, but there's the time that you departments to expend on however you want to do that. But again, I ask, what kind and what frequency of information is beneficial to, to the residents of the town that pay the bill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to public comments, although we probably already started that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a Captain, Captain's got something. Uh, we put two new AEDs in service. One was purchased through the um, Jackson Fire Association with uh, donated money, and the other came out of the fire budget. And um, both those AEDs were purchased through the state at half price. They have a program that you kind of sign up for, and there's three different manufacturers you can buy AEDs. At um, half, half the cost. So we have what they kept. So now there's one on engine seven, which lots of times engine seven goes out by itself, and then we have one on J's. Um, we, we call it 22 car one. So it's for the pickup. They're all mobile. They're all yeah, they're all mobile. And we already have one on um, um, our 22 um, <coughs> O2. That's our like utility vehicle. So we have three in the fire station now yeah. on mobile on equipment. Thank you. Joyce? I think that's what Kevin just said. I think that's good information. You know, but it's going to be in the minutes. And we get to see it. it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, on a, not on a regular basis. But we don't necessarily have. Yeah, we don't have this information all the time like that. Every that's one of the concerns me about having the department is every single week it's going to be. Okay, well, I'm, I got nothing for you this week, and maybe next week I do. You know, I, I don't. You know, I don't think weekly would be um, advantageous to you know probably get messages sent across. Maybe have a couple of department heads that you know obviously are used utilized a little more frequently, like Jay's and and uh, Patrick's. You know, maybe come in once a month or once every other month or quarterly or something with a little regularity. I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, but to go through all the departments every single mm -hmm. Tuesday we have me, I think would be ad, ad nauseum for a lot of people, including myself. Um, you once, know, a month, I, once a month. Well, you could also do floating. Day. You know, you could float rotate them, them around. Yeah, rotate and have sure. one come yep. one week yep. or whatever. But, um, you know, I think the e-news is a good way to communicate things too. So if, you know, anybody can submit information to the e-news and I know a lot of people access that for information as well. Mm -hmm which is always helpful. I always look forward to you know, what goes on there, but I agree always way to improve. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's important to get that information out so we know we got that good stuff coming out with the AEDs and, and, and the bad stuff, of course, you know, when bridges go down. You know, we need to make sure people know. George, you had another comment? Yeah, I have a question. Meeting on the transfer station. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of hard to hear and you could not see the diagrams that were put out. Will we see that information in the minutes and when would we expect those? Um, I don't know when they're due out. I think the minutes were sent to E News today. Today, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I started. They weren't sent to E News yet. Oh. I don't think. Oh, I'm sorry, they were today. Yep, today. You know, the diagrams would be a scan, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Them in there. Well, I didn't. I didn't think Gloria got the diagrams. Yeah, we didn't. No, we didn't. No one. We didn't see those. So. You know, it was just location of where the um, storage containers had were suggested. And Don had a different it's place. It's the same diagram yeah. we've been looking at over the last year and a half. There hadn't been any changes. We were looking at it to take to determine if there was a better place to to uh, place the storage trailers, but there was nothing new about the diagram. I think the diagram itself is about a year and a half old. Would you like a copy after the meeting? I'm sorry. Would you like a copy of the diagram after the meeting? Sure. Okay. I have that still. And, and, and along with that, what is the directive that the transfer station operates under? Directive of a contract between the two towns you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. Which needs to be updated. We are, I don't know if you caught that we were trying to, or Hart's location is trying to be part of the. Things that will have to be all redone up again. Um, 
opened was in 1987, I think was the original. I'm not sure what the date. Yeah, the original contract was in 87, so obviously we've had changes and updates since then, and it's due again. We have that updated. Yep, that was on our, our list to do for sure. Jay? I got a one safety item that I discussed a few months ago that I've noticed recently. It's happened and happened and happened. And just to let you guys know, the at the transfer station when the, all the traffic's backed up and out in the road because everybody seems to get there before noon and they don't open till noon. Right. And I understand people ain't supposed to get there before noon, but they do. It seems a little ridiculous that when this the transfer station employees are sitting at the gate at 11.30 or 11.45 and traffic is backed up out into Route 16, that they cannot open the gate five or 10 minutes early. Um, and I understand people ain't supposed to get there before 12, but they do. And that's definitely a dangerous road and spot. Now, if there's a reason why they can't open it because they got a tractor trailer up there and they're unloading or something. That's different. But it just seems something needs to be said to them that maybe a little common sense needs to come into play in this. And I know when John was there, it was if he got there at 10 minutes to 12, he opened the gate and let people go in. He got there at 20 minutes to 12 or 11.30. So I'm just letting you guys know for the record that there's a safety issue there. And that's a very, very dangerous corner. You can do with it what you would like. Yeah, the bottom line on that is just don't show up early. I mean, I know it's just it's so silly, but it's such a simple solution to that. <laughs> there, there's an even simpler solution to it. You know? I know, but then it becomes yeah. 10, 10 of 8, yeah. 10 of 12. You know, I know, and I know what you're saying. And the thing is, it's open before, they're there before hours because of the different folks that are able to come there for the contractors and other Right. Other people that have that access before the public gets there. So the so. Somebody's going to have to make sure people are in the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Okay, George. Does the state have any solution for the congestion at the road? The state have a solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The state's going to call the transportation to upgrade the road. I mean, there are, you know, you can't go up and to the left and get out of that area. I know it's just, it's silly. You know, just don't go early. In the last 15 years, the use of the dump has drastically increased. Mm. We have four or five employees now. Four or five employees there. Why isn't the dump open a little more often than it was 15 years ago? Mm. So just like you said, they're just gonna, if we open it at 10, they're going to show up at 9.30. Probably. Exactly. You should come to the transfer station but meeting next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Bob? So we meet as a transfer station committee as necessary. And um, uh, in, in between meetings, both towns keep a running list of items that they want to discuss. And Julie is the keeper of our items that we list. and. When we met last week, we discussed all the items of concern that we had. We certainly put that on the next running list, Julie, and uh, when we meet as a transfer station committee, we can have a comprehensive conversation around that, and you'll expect a comprehensive conversation to spill into, well, does that mean they need to get in before 10 to get what they need to do up there done? I mean, th those are all legitimate um, concerns that you'll hear from every side of it. So, and, and, and you know they're Bartlett employees and you know how they would feel about adding hours, but it, there's, there's nothing off the table when we come in as a transfer station committee and meet, which is the two boards. Mm -hmm. And so I can assure you that we'll, we'll have it on our list and we'll pass it along and we'll have a conversation around it. Thanks for the input. I have no idea. <laughs> but listening to what Jay said, I don't doubt it, but the increase in traffic in there is that curb cut as a curb still down. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't think it's a major deal. I mean, you don't see cars down there parking at 11 o'clock, we can get in. It's just that. <laughs> 
initial rush. And, I mean, I remember when John was opening it, it just didn't seem like it was quite as big of a deal because if he got there at 11.30, he opened the gate and let people go in. <laughs> Seems like it's just whatever common sense would tell you what to do in that scenario. But Anything else? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.